Hi, it's Donna from Simple Online Solutions, and I have with me today Denise Duffield Thomas, who is the author of the book called Lucky Bitch. Now, when I first met Denise, I was instantly attracted to the name of her book, and I had to go and find out more. So I poked around her website, and of course, then I eventually headed over to her Facebook page, and I instantly connected because I knew Denise. Um, had a story and it was something that I thought that all of us could relate to. So today I've asked her here to come along and share her story with us. So Denise, I'd like to welcome you to the call. Hi Donna, how are you? It's so nice to connect with you. I'm awesome. Are you having a fantastic day down there? Absolutely. And isn't it nice that we can connect and we're roughly the same time zone? You know, (laughs) we've all got clients all around the world and it's actually nice to, to know we're not that far off from each other. I know. So Denise, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and and just have a little bit of a talk about yourself, Um, you using Facebook as a marketing tool. Um, I also know that your books have been produced in uh, several different formats, so I'd love you to share that because a lot of people probably aren't aware that you can go and do that. And just generally give us an overview how you got started and where we're going. So first of all, please share a little bit about yourself with us. Sure. So I am Australian, but um, I spent most of the last decade actually living in the UK. And my background, I kind of went into event management and marketing and all that kind of stuff. But actually, I always, from being a really little girl, wanted to have my own business. And I actually just didn't, I couldn't find my niche. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. And um, in my early 20s, I kind of dipped a toe into the internet marketing world. But I actually came across... um, just thought, you know, a lot of those dodgy guys who are in the internet marketing world and, um, you know, kind of the dodgy practices and it's kind of like put together a bunch of crap and sell it online. That was kind of my first <laughs> foray into internet marketing. And I didn't really know that there was another way to it. And um, it was only really in the last couple of years that I found my tribe of, of beautiful entrepreneurial women who were doing beautiful stuff online. And um, and that's when I decided to go full time into my own business. So I'm a coach. Um, I'm a life coach, but I'm also a, a small business coach for creative women. And um, that's when I decided to do self-publishing as well. So that's when I decided to write my book, Lucky Bitch kind of as a tool to um, get, you know, get people to know what it is that I'm about. And um, and also it's it's one of those things with the title. I just want to quickly share this because if for people who um, are struggling with, you know, a name of a title or a, a program or whatever, I just asked the universe and I said, universe, send me a million dollar book title. And, um, and that's when Lucky Bitch came into my mind. So, uh, you know, hopefully it will be a million dollar book title. <laughs> Well, I've got to say the book title certainly stands out and no doubt it makes a lot of people go and have a look as I did as to what it was all about because, you know, I can, I can relate to that. So many times I've sat in a cafe and looked across at that person and thought, you lucky bitch, you know, look what you're doing. So that's probably why it was sort of resonates with a lot of people. Yeah. And you know what? The, what it was called before, and this was, you know, my my kind of signature system. It was called the Inspired Life Formula, which is kind of nice and polite, you know. And it was getting some traction, but trust me, lucky bitch, you know, going bold and and um, and just being a little bit honest about what you want to say. And I did want to say, you know, sometimes you do see people and you feel really jealous and think, oh, lucky bitch. But when you're on the other side of it. You know that luck is not something you're born with. It's something that you create, especially in, in, you know, internet marketing world or having your own business. You totally create your own luck. But when you do, it doesn't matter how much work you've put into it, no matter how many years it's taking you to be an overnight success, you'll always have people who go, oh, lucky bitch. (laughs) That just fell into her lap. (laughs) And that's not true at all. And so actually the book itself, it goes through um, the story about how I manifested this all expenses paid trip all around the world. And um, and it was, you know, I really truly believe I manifested it through hard work, but intention that I wanted to go traveling. Um, and then it gives a lot of other tips as well about how you can manifest seemingly good luck, you know, in business, in love, in, in money and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, big tip, go bold. Some people will love it. Some people will hate it. Okay, so with uh, your marketing strategies, etc., you then turn to using Facebook as one of your tools. So why did you decide to use Facebook? Well, I'd been building a network on Facebook um, before I really had a business. 
And um, I just used it really as a way just to connect with people. Anytime I went to a conference, you know, I'd add them to my Facebook page. But I really didn't get a sense of how you could really use it to build a business. And actually, I would say that my number one um, tool for building my business has been blogging. But of course, you can't just blog in isolation. So having that platform of people all around the world who know me have started to, you know, watch my watch my journey, having them on Facebook and already have had a built a relationship with them. When I actually started blogging regularly, straight away, it, it really, really increased my business. It cr- increased my website traffic and um and really helped me build a business almost from scratch. As soon as I kind of hung my shingle out as a life coach, all of those people who I'd built relationships with years before, immediately I had, I had an audience. So how often would you blog? Um, I blog religiously every week, like every single week. And, um, you know, I can look at my website traffic and it's like a heartbeat. It's like, it, you know, goes up the day that I blog and you know, still kind of stays up. But if I don't blog for, you know, a week and a half sometimes, you can see my traffic kind of starts to stagnate. And um, so, you know, blogging is a tool for me, but Facebook is definitely the platform um, that I share my, you know, share my my blog posts with. But blogging is honestly, it's been amazing for me. And so what techniques have you used to increase your fan base other than connecting at events? Um, Well, that's that's been a big one for me. But um, also, I um, I do a lot of stuff now with um, with with groups. So I'm involved in a lot of groups that are either closed or secret or whatever, and they're usually from programs that I've been involved in, or um, you know other kind of say events that I've been to. And that has been fantastic because we've all got something really in common and usually you can post your, your stuff in there as well. So that's been helpful, especially if they've been entrepreneurial groups because straight away, as soon as anyone starts their fan page, you can you can actually ask for support within that group. And they're, if they're entrepreneurs, they understand the importance of that kind of stuff and usually they will, you know, jump in and support support you or come over and um and, you know, support a blog post or something like that. So that's definitely been one that's important. But you know what, Donna, I've made a lot of mistakes in this too. And so I, I'm always really honest and open about this kind of stuff. One of the mistakes I'm, I did make was rename my was name my page too long. And I, I think you've said that you can change the name of your page now. But um, one of the things I did, I, I actually deleted everyone off my page so I could change the name. <laughs> 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 Which is really dumb because, of course, just you know, not long after you can change the name. But I don't know if everyone knows that that you can change Look, the name the, now. The new whole name change thing is awesome because the name of my um, Facebook page is Simple Online Solutions, helping you grow your online business. And I did that like you at the time because that's what I was told to do. Yep. And of course now, you know, it's got all sorts of bits just too long and gangly and and um yeah I'm really keen about that new tool because I'm going to chop that down and just make it simple online solutions but I was sort of at that point that I thought oh no I can't roll my fans back to 100 to do that so yay for this new name change that uh it's only recently been brought in and if you want to know anybody listening to the call I'm happy to share that link with you and just show you where to go through and do it yeah well the other mistake that I made um quite early on I was just building everything on my personal page and you know I would go through and I would add um, people every day as a friend so you know that's a mistake um, because obviously you know there's a limit on that and now I'm kind of undoing a lot of that work and getting people over to my fan page you know and so that's why I'm, I'm really keen to learn from people like you as well when you've got um, things like the competitions and stuff like that to lure some of those people back so you know I'm really honest about the mistakes that I've, I've made in that <laughs> Do you know that um, there's a feature on your Facebook page where you click and you go invite friends and yes. um, have you used it? I used it at the beginning, but I think I was a little bit worried about spamming people. No, no, trust me, go use it. On okay. fan page competitions when I set it up, 
I used to just use that little feature every day and I would invite 20 people and it was surprising the amount of people that came over and liked my Facebook page oh, right. and that quickly increased my traffic on it. So, uh, you know, if you've got close to 3,000 friends, I would urge you to go and try that out because a lot of those friends you want to take over to your page. Yeah. And the, the thing is with your friends, you can only have 5,000, whereas on your page, obviously, you can have as many as you like. Um, but the other thing is if you're not adding friends now, there is um, that awesome subscribe feature that people can still get all your content, but you don't have to allow them into that inner friend circle. Yeah, well, I have a question on that, if you don't mind, because I was just talking about this to someone today. You know, I feel like I'm very open and honest about everything that I do. And um, and so, you know, my personal page, I use it as a business page because there's nothing that I wouldn't really share on there that's not on brand for me. So I was thinking, well, if people can subscribe anyway, what's the point about trying to get all my friends? Friends over to my business page. So if you can answer that, that would be really, really helpful for me. <laughs> well, first of all, your personal profile is meant to purely be for socialising and not discussing business. Mm. Um, and so you can throw a little bit of the mix in there. And, um, you know, and I think a lot of people feel exactly the same as you, Denise, because when they changed this or brought out this subscribe, it really changed the playing field. Mm. Um, and people keep subscribing to me and I go, hey, I only share stories about my golden retriever and a little bit of business but you know mainly it's you know Donna is the same open and honest I don't share about my family because to me that's personal and I, it's not something I want to put out there for the world to see um, but the thing is 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 for the strategy that you're using you'll be locked off at 5,000 whereas if they subscribe there's no limit on the subscriber mm. but of course you, there's certain things that you can't do with them too and the advantage is, is as a subscriber, for instance, they can't ask you a question there. They can't write on it. Whereas on your Facebook page, they can now hit the, um, well, A, the message button so they could message you immediately, which they could have done, I guess, if they were a friend, but as a subscriber, not necessarily, because you can lock that down. And the other thing they can post on your page, whereas as a subscriber, they can't. Mm. So, you know, you've got, you've got that ability for them to be able to connect on your page, whereas really as a subscriber, depending upon your settings, they can't really connect with you. Right. Well, that's really, really helpful. Um, and I guess I have one other question on this, if we, if we can answer, cause, <laughs> because it's so, it's really helpful for me, actually, because Facebook has been such a brilliant tool for me, but mainly as that personal page. And so I'm at that point where I've got, you know, a decent amount of friends and most of them are people that, you know, I don't know personally. And so I was getting to a point where it's like, well, it's growing so big, you know, how do I manage this changeover? And one of the things I noticed was, say, for example, someone like Ali Brown, who, you know, I love and follow as an entrepreneur. And I think I remember friending her when she was still probably, you know, not, you know, that, um, you know, she was still kind of well known, but she was still accepting friend requests at that time. So this was probably in about 2009. And at some point, I think she just kind of deleted everybody and, you know, got her over to the fan page. But now if you search for Ali Brown, her personal profile won't even come up. Um, but my name's the same for my personal and my and my fan page. It's both Denise Duffield Thomas. So I'm just wondering, is there some way that you can just block yourself from even coming up in personal searches? Or do you think that they've kind of slightly changed their personal names that people can't find them? Well, if you lock it down in your uh, security settings and basically have it shut off, it just won't come up in search. Right. So I would say Ali's probably gone through and done that. I mean, she could have obviously changed her name so that it's different. But once you go and claim your URL, which is your username URL, um, that's when things pop up. So without probably trying to have a look at Ali to see where she's at. But I would say she's probably just completely locked it down so that when people are searching it, it um, doesn't, it no longer pops up. Mm. And um, I, I've had friends um, and uh, this, this interview was supposed to be about you, not about me. <laughs> no, but I, it's good to know. <laughs> well, I, I had a friend, a gentleman friend, I might add. And, uh, you know, for whatever reason, it, I just sort of said, look, this is not happening. And we were friends on Facebook. And, of course, he immediately come along, shut me off Facebook, blocked me, and I could never find him again in search. You know, so there's different things that people do. Not, I'm sure not that Ali blocked you, but there is different things that people can do. And certainly with the security settings, you can lock it right down. And, and security is a huge thing for a lot of people. 
mm. a huge thing. So, um, yeah, we'll have a look at it when the call's over. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Denise, one of the things I was going to say to you, what's the best technique you've used in terms of, say, your Facebook marketing, do you think? Well, I um, Facebook is my point of call, first point of call for everything. So I think one of the best things that I've done is um, linked all my social media together. Um, so my Facebook things go to Twitter and then also go to LinkedIn. And um, I think the reason why that's been so useful is that I'm on Facebook all day long. And um, I comment on people's things all the time and I, I'm really interactive. And um, just having that cascade effect to all the other social media means that I can just focus on Facebook and, um, and building those relationships. And, um, you know, it's so funny. I didn't realize that I was on Facebook so much, but I really do live on it. And it's been at um, two separate people. Um, so I, when I was at Ali Brown's conference and I got up to ask a question and I said, you know, hi, I'm Denise Stafford Thomas, author of Lucky Bitch. And she goes, oh, you're the girl who's always on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh. And then another lady, you know, Shazzy, I don't know if you know her from the raw food world. She said the same thing one time. And I thought, wow, I, you know, I really am on Facebook all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, well, it's whether, it, you know, this is the thing though, is it because you're on there all the time or is it because your branding is working? See, for me, that name, Lucky Bitch, you're never going to forget it. So if somebody repeated it or said it, it's going to stand out in your mind. Um, you know, one of my businesses is fan page competitions. Now, okay, that doesn't stand out, but my image of me and my pink shirt, you can't miss that on a page. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and I know people say to me, oh, I've seen you all over the place and I giggle because I know that I haven't really been all over the place, even though I am on Facebook quite a lot, but it's that image. And I would say your branding really, really adds to that. So, you know, when, when you talk about being on Facebook all day long, how many times a day would you post on a new page? Um, on my own pages, I don't do too many. I'm pretty careful about that. So maybe just a couple, maybe two or three max, but I comment on a lot of people's stuff. Um, so obviously that shows up in people's feeds. feeds too. And, and look, you know, that is that is how you get seen out there. That is the whole thing. And if, you know, often people say to me, because I've just been doing speaking engagements and they say, well, how do you get seen? And I go, you need to get out there and comment. You need to go and as your page and comment and you will get seen and that will elevate you up there. So you're definitely doing the right thing when it, in terms of, you know, using Facebook because that's what it's for. It's socialising, it's having fun and it's being seen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, thanks. It's, a, <laughs> it's, it's good It's good to get this feedback and it's also I've got a list of um, things to do <laughs> straight away oh. when I get off this call. <laughs> I was going to say we we do have to have to keep this on time because we want to be able to place this up on Facebook. So I'm going to ask you to quickly share with me one tip that you would like to give to the listeners. Yeah, I think it's just um, be yourself. You know, I've really found that that's been such a useful thing for me is not to be worried about what people um, think of you and not be try and be too polite or too nice. You know, really be yourself because that's I've seen everything in my in my business just completely take off so much quicker when I decided to own my brand. Excellent. So where can we find the Lucky Bitch book? <laughs> so oh, it's fabulous. You can find it in um, in Amazon and paperback or Kindle. All the random ebook stores like the Nook and the Kobo and, you know, all those other kind of random ones as well. If you come over to luckybitchbook.com, which is my book website, you can find all the different places but if anyone um, buys it and they're listening to this send me an email at bonus at luckybitchbook.com and I'll send you um, something really really cool as well just um, yeah send over your receipt but you know connect with me on Facebook because I love hearing stories about you know your lucky bitch journeys and um, manifesting and things like that really really makes my day so, Denise, how do they find you on Facebook? <laughs> if, you, if you search for Denise Duffield Thomas. And um, I'm going to add some extra things on there now after I've spoken to you, Donna. So hopefully people can find me even quicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got two days before we share this, so I'll be intrigued to see what you do. So, Denise, thank you so much for coming along today and sharing. And, uh, look, you know, please feel free to come over to Simple Online Solutions and post any time you like and share your lucky bitch story over there <laughs> with us. Thanks, Donna. I really appreciate it. You're more than welcome. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this call today, and we'll see you soon in Facebook.